Thanks a lot for staying. Jennifer just joined us. This is TMI. In this discussion segment, it's all about home. Yes, Edo is home. And the election is coming up on the 21st of September 2024. Less than a month, you're beginning to see campaigns, you're beginning to see messages, you're beginning to hear about manifesto, you just name it. But that is an impact of effective campaigns. I see have my analysts here with me in the studio, uh, Bashir Kadri, Christopher Ejikiri, and of course, Barista uh, uh, Goldino Aiken. And don't forget to mention Benjamin Mayor all the way from Germany. We will get to hear their own views and opinions on this particular discussion. Let me come to Comrade uh, Kadri. Yes, it's like the tempo of campaign has increased tremendously. Some are saying that all parties, all the top of political parties, or five of them, are putting all their cards on the table to try to convince electorates on who to vote for. What do you have to say about this trend? Well, um, Wilson, I, I think campaign is a natural process in democratic arrangement where you share your thoughts and ask people to support you or vote for you, as the case may be. But I think, um, again, globally, you also have these tendencies of um, political opponents trying to create uh, bantams and blackmail the others and make sure that the others are uh, tinted to look as if they are the Satan and they are the angels. Uh, that has been the problem. But I think what is important is that, first, let them share with us what their ideologies are. One of the problems that I have with Nigerian political arrangement is that it's no longer ideologically driven. It is now egocentric and not altruistic. That's my problem. I found that people campaigning, a lot, a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them, campaign on the basis of egocentrism. It's me, me, and me. And they play, they play more on that without looking at the altruistic tendency of a leader. Now, that is one. The second, also, I have my challenge, is that let us start addressing issues and play less on, it, on individual, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, denigration. You want to become, you want to lead the people. The people want to hear what you want to do for them. You spend 80% of your time denigrating, insulting, blackmailing, and you spend little or no time telling us what you want to do. We want to hear what you want to do for us. If things, we are, not, if things are not the way they are, it's not dynamic, we won't need you. But because of the dyna dynamic nature of society, that's why we need a regular change. And that's why democracy came with two tenure maximum. So that at the end of that, and you would have exhausted what you wanted to do. That's the absorption. And so, for me, I think they should spend more time telling us what they want to do, and not spending more time in, in, in distorting and creating problems. And when they now come tomorrow with their hair responsible for what they said, they now begin to complain. You know, that is a problem I have with politicians. It's not just here, it's several across the globe. If you keep blaming the man you, that was there before, for the man that was there before, he didn't do this one. You spent almost the whole of your tenure condemning the man that was there. If there was no lacuna, there was no gap, there was no challenge, nobody would require you to come over. It is because there are issues. Let me tell you one thing, my dear, that challenges makes a life stronger. And how does it make life stronger and better? Is that you deploy the experience of those challenges to make a better future. When somebody tells me, I don't want I say, no, 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 don't tell you don't want challenge. Challenges are part of the ingredient required for you to succeed in life. Even if you want to go to university, you want to be a professor, you have to go and read your books. You have to make sure that you do some, some level of hunger drive so that you can read your books. Because one scholar told us in history that too much food in the tummy doesn't even make you think well. Half tummy, half food. Half empty, half food makes you think well. So for me, I think our campaign arrangement should, should please be on issues. Be on issues? On issues. All right. More of issues. You can talk about but more of issues so that we can hear you better. We can understand you better. We can appreciate what you are telling us. We cannot begin to ruminate on what you have told us. 
and digest it and see whether it suits what we, we intend to see as our, as our future. Because every society has a future. And uh, finally, before I, I stop on this, is that the subnationals, I want to advise all subnationals, all mm. the states, the time has come. Let states wake up and wake the economy up. Mm. The okay. federal government, every day, federal, federal, is not helping. Let, let the state wake up. Every state has a potential. And that's what I think the political class should be giving us at the state level. There are potentials in the state that you have to harness. So that when the local economy is strong, it will reduce some of these social issues mm. and issue in partition. All right. And many a time we carry the issues of the state and even put them on federal government. What state would have done? They wouldn't do it. What council would do? The council would not do it. And when the election comes, they start telling us stories about how that man is a thief, how that man is a criminal, how that man is this one. You spend almost all the time talking about the other man and not spending so much time in telling us. And that's why you discover that they are do too much, too much research they do because they are not ideologically driven. If they are ideologically guided, ideologically mm. guided, they will, they will run to the ideology. All in right. other part of the world, what you find is that parties are driven by ideology. Okay. But here, it is by Tommy and by my interest and ego. Tommy, interest, ego. I I'll come back to you. Now, some of the opinion that the campaigns we are seeing at this particular point in time lacks substance. They are saying cuts across board. Like what is said, attack, that the grade, blackmail, you know, insults and all that. It cuts across all political party. Is this healthy? Well, um... I like to make a distinction, I don't know how clear it will be, between campaigning and the substance of campaign. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what Kadri concentrated on was substance of campaign. Whether there is a going round going on, mm -hmm. there are going rounds going on. Whether there are world visitations going on, there are. Whether there are engagements in social media, there is. Mm -hmm. But what is the substance of campaign? And uh, I think part of the problem is that the parties themselves that produce the candidates have no defined ideology. Uh, it's part of the problem, not that I blame the problem solely on the parties. I think our level of development makes almost all the parties to have the same kind of agenda. Mm -hmm. The basic things of life we lack here. So every party has to talk about how to feed um, the cities. Everybody has to talk about how to provide housing, Medicare, good roads, um, improved standards of education, and all of that. That is why what makes any sense to me is that somebody sat down and articulated these problems in a document, which we call the manifesto. And that's the candidate of the PDP in those state elections. They all have manifestos. Well, I haven't seen any. All the APC, Labour Party, NAP, they all have party manifestos. I've seen it. OK, OK, very yes. good. It's good that you have seen it. Mm. But the one I know that I have seen, well articulated, five points agenda. Because every time I want to talk about the parties, I'm looking for which manifesto to talk on. Yesterday, I just wrote an article, which I wrote, which I called the practical value of, you know, uh, Dr. Aswa Yodalu's manifesto. I saw that the first item there was yeah, well-being of the people. No, we are not here to campaign. Okay. Well, there is a platform for that. Okay. Now, I have to look, put a break okay, on that, please. No, okay. You yes. are talking about um, the effectiveness mm. of the impact of campaign. Campaign. So if you don't have a manifesto, mm. that is when you begin to engage on personal and egoistic level. As Kadiri said, if you have a manifesto, I should expect that if you are addressing any group of people, whether in the podium or in the town, you are discussing your manifesto. So if you have a paper written, which are seen or which is seen by a limited number of people, and then you yourself don't even know what is inside the paper, or if you know, you set the paper aside and you are discussing these other primordial things, it means that that paper. Is just there as a formality. It is not you. It's not your ideology. It's not your worldview, and it's not your value system. The man who has a paper written and is discussing what is inside the paper, that's him. And that's whatever he's discussing, there can be seen as his policy thrust. 
And then you can work out an ideology from his policy trust. It's, it's, it's a governance ideology from his policy trust. Mm. So in a developing democracy like Nigerians, like Edo State, what I expected was people would have their manifestos and discuss those manifestos. So if you meet people, you meet doctors, you are telling them where we are in our medical uh, 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 development level in Edo State and what you intend to do to improve that. Whether to create a trust for um, um, uh, 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 an intervention fund to take care of our medical personnel in the rural area, or you are thinking of creating mobile clinics that would help you know, to meet people in the rural area in their beds, or if you are addressing MBA or you are addressing uh, uh, pensioners or adult civil servants, you are telling us what you intend to do to develop that sector. That's the kind of politics I should expect now. So, that politics shows that you understand what the issues are in the dust day, because we're concentrating on the yes. dust now, and what you intend to do to improve on what is on ground already. Mm. If you are not doing that, and you are spending time to say whether people are Edo people, I don't know how a man's name, for instance, you know, uh, permit me again, <laughs> can be absolutely <laughs> very good, and we don't okay. know whether he's Edo. All right. And so, All right. when, when, if you spend time, mm. All your energy, trying to argue such a foolish argument that because I did not do all my schoolings mm. in a do state, and I did not baptize, I was not baptized in my village by my village catkis, that I'm not from the state. Whereas you have that a do state is the most traveled race in the black race. Mm. Okay. As early as 1540, we had an ambassador in Lisbon. Okay. A Bayesinger himself who sent the ambassador to Lisbon could write and read Portuguese. All right. And we have the largest number of people in the diaspora today. I should expect that diaspora travel mm. should be what a community should celebrate. Because if they gain knowledge and they gain exposure and experience, mm. they can bring it back home. I'll come back yes. to you. I'll come back to you. Because this cuts across political parties. You know, we used to like, you know, come, sometimes give it a live coverage, and listen intently. The PDP, the APC, some of our news coverage, get to see the labor. The YPP, the NNPP, I get to hear what they say. In some climate, you get to hear, he doesn't know how to talk. Look, my address people. Some in that are saying it's a dumb dumb. And they're saying, no, it's not from this state. They ruined this state. Personal attacks, it cuts across board. This kind of campaign, barrister, will it be enough to sway the hearts of electorates to vote for these political parties from your own assessment? Well, I thank you so much. We, we, we are practicing democracy. Mm. And in democracies, there are more be political parties. We don't have private candidacy under the Nigerian Constitution. And the political parties have their manifestos, which they have to sell to the people. They must have ideologies. And people must, with which they will hold them responsible if they fail. But what do we say today? of the Nigerian system. I don't really know whether any of them is politics without ideology. I can jump from this party tomorrow to the other party. Stomach if infrastructure, mm. personal gains, is not what the people will benefit. Yeah, we have seen governors in these states before. Bermudian was not an Isama, but there were, he built schools. Ali was not a Benima, he built schools across the whole Bender state. These were people who had ideas of what it means to govern. The, the campaign today, you see people, personal attacks. You don't, this one. What are you going to do? That is the major issue. Mm -hmm. When you come in, all their campaigns have no substance. All the parties are nonsense. There is none of them who will say, this is my major one, it's free education, free head, this. I will, I, will, I, will, I will create road. I will build this. The other man didn't do it well. I will do it. Is that what we are talking about? Is that what you are coming to tell people at the end? Oh, and in four years, the mess, I'm, trying, I'm clearing the mess of the former man. And mm -hmm. did they bring you to clear the mess? To d improve the life of the people. What is the substance? What do you want to do? No matter the origin, where you come from, if you have the capacity, why not, why not vote for you? Why attacking each other? Mm. Tell people what you are going to do. 
as, as long as far as I'm concerned, all the campaigns so far, they lack substance. They lack substance. They lack substance. Okay, I I'll come back to you. Benjamin, over now to you. You've listened to uh, Comrade uh, uh, Kaduri and, of course, uh, Comrade Christopher and uh, uh, Barrister Godwin. But what we can really bring out from what they are talking about is like substance is lacking in these campaigns. Take it up from there. Thank you. Um, this is the most interesting segment of the whole program because uh, <laughs> uh, I've been part of this campaign. And I should be able to tell you where the pendulum is swinging. I will only talk about what I know and about the party that I belong to and about the candidate that I'm supporting. Mind you, like no campaigning. The, I know. I, I, this, you know, I can only say what I, what I know. This is, in, this is national TV. I can only say what I know. I don't know about all this other political party. Uh, what my brother, elder brother in the studio said, as of today, we only have uh, three major political candidates who have been campaigning that I have seen, and one of them, which is Dr. Asu Godalo, who is happen to be my uh, candidate, the man I love so much, the Edo people love him, have been able to present a clear manifesto to the good people of Edo State. Within Edo State in Nigeria and across the border, has gone to America, come to the Euro, gone to the England, to present his manifesto. And during his manifesto presentation, he made it clear to Nigerians, this is not just the manifesto. This is my, this is my agreement with the Edo people. This is my agreement between me and the Edo people. You know, the, 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 the issues, or rather the good thing about manifesto is that um, when you... When I got in the notification to attend this program today, you sent me the topic of the program. I do a lot of research, and I jotted some things out. This will aid me in talking, so that I will not, so that I will not jump the bar. And you made it clear on that invitation. This is not a political campaign. That is what manifesto talks about. But the manifesto in the political party, in the political terms, or rather in regarding this Edo State election, it has to be like a manual of somebody's administration when he comes into power. And that is what Dr. Asulimi Godalo have been able uh, oh, to do. Hold on, this is what I put my foot on the ground. You have been going to campaign, Benjamin. Okay. I okay, told okay, you okay, about so, this. Hold on, hold on, I hold told on, you hold about on. this. I cannot Please, say, wait a minute. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, hold on. I can say something without mentioning it. I'm not saying you should vote for him. That's, that's when we become campaign. It doesn't I'm matter. Okay. Okay, now let me, okay, let me point it this way. You, you said said the party, seen, fine. I will take okay. that, but okay. not the candidate, please. Okay, okay, okay. You have seen other candidates' manifesto. Have you been able to read the PDP candidate manifesto? I believe you have not. If you have been able to do that, you will find that, that his manifesto practically and theoretically align with the challenges that the two people are facing. That is what we call the substance of campaign. And I want to point it out clear to everybody who is listening. You can quote me anywhere, you can challenge me anywhere. If you have seen anywhere where the PDP candidate have used statement, a derogatory statement towards other candidate, I, Benjamin Mayor Yamedan, I will stop campaigning for him, I will stop supporting him. One is a complete gentleman, complete gentleman to the cause. He has categorically told most of us who are supporting him, Benjamin, do not attack. Benjamin, I'm okay. going to cut okay. you off right now for the reason you know about, but I'll come back to you. I know you're passionate about your party, passionate about your candidate, but you are derailing indirectly. Okay. Okay. We know where I you are going to. I know, I know. So okay. I'm, I, I'm going to leave you right now to come back to you for the next round of questions, okay? Just gather right. your facts, gather your thoughts, and play less on the name of the candidate. That's the also campaign. When others will start to be like, Wilson, what is this? Please, we have a platform for that. You know this, I know this. People are moved by what they hear. Yes, I took attempt to read through the manifesto of PDP, APC, Labour Party, I'm yet to see that of the N uh, NNPP and of course the YPP, I'll go through it later. But people don't really have time to read through it. 
And for that you have to come out to talk to the people, most of them don't utilize it to hammer more on what they have for Edo people. Now, that is a complaint of most of the persons in the streets. Like what he said, the campaign lacks substance. They focus more on the opponent. They focus more on the individual. They focus more on lapses. Do you think that this kind of campaign will have an impact on an electorate that's trying to make copies of our mind to go vote for particular candidates? Now, Wilson, um, this is not a campaign structure. Hmm. I understand. And that, that is why you saw when I was making my opening remarks, yeah. I did not even mention names. But you see, like they say, they say that facts are sacred. Hmm. Opinion is free. This is fundamental. It's life. Facts are sacred. Opinion is free. Today, I mentioned today when I was giving my opening remarks on this discussion, hmm. that if, we, if our parties are driven by ideology, not by ego, not by self, who we'll have this thing they are having now? Maybe one of the part, political parties, to avoid calling names, their, their, their driver had made some very fine remarks. Like I said, I said a lot of them, I didn't say all, I said a lot of them have just driven us to begin to think that this is just a charade mm. and not a serious business. Whereas what is going on is a serious business because to have a leader to rule for the next four years after Obaseki is a serious business mm. and must be taken very seriously and not play with it as if you are playing with, with, uh, with children in the moonlight. This is a very serious problem. Now, I'll tell you this, uh, Wilson. What is also true is that the people of Edo mm. are beginning to understand what they need. For the first time in our political history, a very long time, the first time, that a governor was elected against the tide. I use the word tide. Mm. If you like, call it, um, call it an illegal tide. I call it illegal tide because it was not a tide of the people, it was a tide of an individual. Mm. And that time was in the last election. People came in mass and voted against all the con con conceptualizations of federal might, this might, that might. And the elections came and went. Because why? People heard and they knew what they wanted. People of Edo have gone beyond this, this, this story of denigration, name calling, and blackmailing. We have gone beyond that. And that is why I've told people that every tribe have the best, and every tribe have the, have the worst. Let us pick the best among us to write our process. Because the day we decide to allow our sentiments of tribal definition, religious affinity, and all of those primordial sentiments to decide what we do as a people, that day we are in the canvas. Today, if we can be sure that Edo had made some tremendous marks. This is not a story, it is a reality. And if you ask me, I will give you some landmarks. Why? Because there was a build on it. What has happened to our country is that we do not build on what we built. We destroy what we built and start starting afresh. And what do you do, my dear? When you build your house from foundation to four blocks before they say time is up, Somebody else came on board, who's supposed to put the additional block to complete the house. Now come on board and remove that thing or abandon it and go for another one. The next four years, you also get to the point you got to and again go away and nothing is happening. And so for me, this is a dangerous thing. So if we have a progressive development, why so today there's a state in this country, let me also go to that state world, but that state is, is about the highest IGR state in Nigeria making about 45 billion to 50 billion or 60 billion monthly on IGR. That state will not wait for federal government to come and finance their project. They will do that project themselves, and they will run the system. All I am looking, looking after, my brother, is that let whoever is coming on board take a do economy to the next level. Mm. The economy of a do, if a do economy is strong, we don't even bother what happened in Abuja. All we do is that our state is developing. Subnationals should now go back and rework, rejig their economics, and make it work. Now, I expect that whoever is going to come on board, and I expect that the, the campaign now should have been focused on the economics, on develop, on industrialization of the state, mm. so that the state can have something mm. to sit back. You know, a time was in Lagos. Obasanjo, God is, is a great man now. I call him great because I'm an elderly man. I don't want to give him names that are not, not sweet mm. on TV. Who now become older than thou and a saint and a superstar. Refused to allow Lagos State to have local government. 
And they said, because whatever reason they gave. But don't the whole government survived. I mean, everybody here understands what I'm talking about. They survived. Why? Because their local economy could finance their projects. You know what I'm saying? If it's a federation, as we, as we are, every federating state should have a capacity to develop itself. And I am looking forward to that. And that is why at my mind teeth towards the man who have the capacity, who have a historical reference and a pedigree. I don't want to call his name here because this is not a campaign ground. Mm -hmm. Who has a pedigree and historical reference to give us the to take us to the next level? And that is what we should be looking for in campaign. Mm -hmm. And I expect that whoever is campaigning now, let them tell us how did, how would they increase Nigeria? I do say IGR. Mm -hmm. They don't tell us when I don't go take us to. And finally, before I anchor this, I know people should be now be thinking. These people campaigning for us. Let's look at their history. I've always told you here that what I believe is not about your tribe, your religion. Mm. It's about your history, your pedigree, and your antecedents. Have you, what have you done in the past? Where are you coming from? Who are you? All right. And nobody can deny his history. You can, you can deny the present, but you can't deny your history because it's already gone. And it's already in records, either written formally or written informally in the minds of men or in the papers. So okay. you can't deny them. So it is important that the current situation we are now is that the Edo people, like I said today, are already very clear in their head where they are going to. All right. And secondly, and finally, I want to suggest it before, you, before I stop so that we can, that can talk, mm. is that we must begin to now know that Edo is our state. If it is collapsing, we are in trouble. If it stands, we are better. Mm. Taking Edo as a state is one of the hub that's why they call it the heartbeat of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It is not by accident. It's a hub. And so anything that is the best you come from here. Edo rescued. Edo man rescued Nigeria at the time. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that Edo was seen as a stabilizing force in Nigeria. Nigeria. Am I communicating, gentlemen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what, I, what I'm saying. So, All right. so at that level, yeah. whoever is coming on board now, we should think of the man who had the pedigree, who had the history, I'll come back to identify you. us. Thank you so, so much, uh, uh, Comrade Kadri. Welcome, Christopher. Uh, you know, some of our elderly ones that are not so bright because of the education exposure, uh, one come and say, we are saying, in Pidgin English, I'm getting confused. I used to see this man with the APC. Now he's in the PDP. Now he's in Labour. Now he's in YPP, NNPP, LP, you just name it. And he's speaking for a political party. This is impeding my ability to choose for uh, uh, between those parties who I'm to vote for. I think about the caliber of persons they see at various campaigns being shown on TV. It'll be like, I know this guy used to be here, now we see him back here. These are confusing. Do you think this can effectively make an electorate make up his own mind on who or which party to vote for, Comrade Christopher? Well, you're talking about the fluidity with which uh, politicians move from one party to another. Mm -hmm. um, you see, a society accepts what it has made itself to be. We, there are many things that are norms here that are high aberrations and are thinkable in other climes. But we have accepted them as norms and we are trying to navigate within the system. I think it's one of the reasons why they say Nigerians are very strong. Mm -hmm. We are very uh, inexorable. We, we withstand shocks. I remember Dele Kiwa, before he died long ago, wrote an article, The Unshockable Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So if, as for LDS in this watch, it's as early as uh, 1983 or so. Mm -hmm. If Dele Kiwa would write that then, then yeah. they extrapolate and think of what it come now. Mm -hmm. So uh, people who like to be stable, who are conservatives and who probably have not been able to address their mind to the fluidity of our system, they can get confused with that kind of thing, especially when those people are even just beyond um, um, political actors. They are actually speaking for the party. And then uh, last election, I spoke for this party. This election, is speaking for this party. Okay. <laughs> we don't know which side we're speaking for the next election. You know, things like that. So it, it, it confuses people. And uh, Kadiri was talking about president, uh, precedences and pedigrees and so on and so forth. That yeah. should count as one of it. Mm -hmm. Because that's super part of your CV, should be part of your profile that you are so fluid, we no longer, we, rolling moors gathers no moss. So we are rolling stones gather no moss. That's mm -hmm. one of the English parables they say. 
we don't know where to pitch our tent with you because we don't know where you'll be in the next party. Mm -hmm. So such things are, you know, part of the profile of the person or of the party, which should help guide us, you know, when we are talking because stability and continuity is so important. We're talking about continuity of institutions, continuity of policies and ideology. We're not talking about continuity of persons or continuity of uh, political parties. We are saying that, for instance, that if you have an education policy that is running and it's yielding results, it will be only for the best of the state. If you come and improve on that running educational policy, rather than say because it was brought in by party A, you just come, you go and bring other consultants and you start all over again, mm -hmm. and then you keep putting four, four blocks every four years. That's, that's <laughs> you it. So every four years you have four blocks, next mm -hmm. four years we have another four, four blocks. blocks. If we have people, a government and its developing institutions, or it's developing uh, uh, the economy in certain ways mm -hmm. that, are, that is clear that we're having a productive economy, it is only good to increase such productivity. It's only good to establish those uh, you know, investments into mm -hmm. institutions. So just for sake of change, we shouldn't be changing. We should actually really weigh. We should give sober reflections and weigh. And that's why sincerity among those who are campaigning is so important. Because when you come and dupe the public, either because you, have a, uh, you are barely literate and you are talking to a cynical public who thrive on cynical news, who, who like complaining and lamenting. And so you cash in on that and you dupe them because you, you can manipulate facts. So you mm -hmm. concentrate, you remove your decision from issues and go ad hominem. And you con concentrate on, you know, just primordial sentiment. Let me yeah. just use that word again. And then you emphasize that and confuse the people and take them away from the issue. And then they make mistakes. You are actually to be held responsible for that. So even if you are in a particular party, be constructive. You know, if you say, I mean, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, somebody who drives through Yarrow, Yarrow is a very popular place in the mm -hmm. state. And then you tell the young man who drives through Yarrow all the time, either he's driven or he drives through Yarrow, either in the public transport or something, you say, for instance, uh, I'm happy Obaseki is not in the ballot. Obaseki has done nothing in education. And every time the man is passing, he looks at what is going on in the former Ministry of Education building. What is going on, what is happening there? It's, it's a complex. It's not a building. Smart one. And then you tell such person. I mean, the person, I, I mean, he will he'll be struggling with, you are a very respectable person he respects, and mm. you are telling him that, and he's a young man, he doesn't want to challenge you. But he's wondering. And, you know, by the time he realizes, Every other thing you tell him is not going to believe you because he will now realize that you are either talking from spite or something. You are not yeah. dwelling on facts. He cannot deny what he's saying. So we need to be constructive. It's okay when well, he has uh, managed to construct, reconstruct the federal, I mean, uh, state ministry of education building. is building a company. I give that to him. But why has he not done so in bringing? Mm. You understand that? Hey, right. you, you are able to balance your argument. Your argument. Yes. Yeah, okay. So you are able to you give constructive criticism. Mm. So there are things that are facts. As a cadre said, sorry, I keep uh, referring to, to him. All right. Yes, there are things that are facts. And you facts cannot, are stubborn. You cannot argue and wish facts away. All right. <laughs> All right. Now uh, le let me come to you, Barrister yes. uh, uh, Godwin. Yeah. Uh, uh, some are saying that for what they've perceived that. This campaign lacks another ingredient, sincerity. Now, most of these guys coming out to talk, the talks, the addition now to the people is filled with so much insincerity. In other words, some are saying some of these comments are made to dupe, so to speak, in Boreo language now, the populace and the electorate. Now, what do you have to say about this? You see, this is not new. There have only been governmental fraud on the people. The government defraud the people by telling them lies. And that is the situation we find ourselves. And at the end of the day, the gullible members of the public, because of their poverty, they are prepared to accept whatever provided you monetize your ideas. At the end of the day, the election you are talking about is not based on the principles not what it is, it's what people would take that day, the money. 
in a country where illiteracy is prevalent, poverty is prevalent, election is meaningless. What will determine the election is the morning of that particular day. It's not what they are lacking. Provided that few, two days they have something to eat. We hear government now bringing palates, rice. If you eat rice, you don't need water, you don't need oil, you don't need tomatoes. I was passing a CJ street. I went to see a person. I look at that edifice, that water project of Bermuda, wasting away. There is no water now. Look at Okbila Semen Factory, wasting away. All right. Right. Beauty, wasting away. You see, as uh, my colleague, the discussion have said, yeah. they are campaigning, but what they say, which I, I support, is that they should look at the pretty degree of the candidates involved. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's in this political party, in this manifesto. What is the pretty degree? What has it done in the past? What is his education quali qualification? What is achievements in choosing a career that he can improve upon? Not that it's in this party. It's from this particular town. It's not from this particular town. Look at their, their antecedents, as it rightly said. What if this man can do this in the past? Certainly, he should be able to improve on it. Not that he's been maybe spoon-fed by some persons because he belongs to this party. He must be there. Their pretty great matter, the antecedent, their history, which you cannot hide. This should have been the determinant factors in choosing whatever manner of campaign that might be going on. But the electorate should look at these issues. Is this man coming to carry out government fraud again? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, go away with it. If he had not done anything traceable to him, known to the members of the public, how can he achieve this time around? That is my special view. All right. Now yeah. let's get straight down to Germany where Benjamin is standing by. I know you love your candidate. Please, Benjamin, cut it down on the campaign, please, okay? Now, <laughs> people have the opinion that what is happening right now in Edo State, if the campaign is not well, I will put it now, organized or monitored, we may end up chasing shadows rather than chasing that particular object or let's say objective that is campaign and not really telling the electorate who to vote for rather most electorates or some of them are disgusted with the campaign the caliber of people uh, the candidates you just name it take it up from there um Electorate which are waiting for the day for the election because of the money that is involved. I want to remind us, and I put this on record, I know people are one of the most uh, electorally educated uh, people in Nigeria. We are not voting based on sentiment. We are not voting based on uh, this person told us to vote this one. No. We know what we want. And I do people know what they want. And uh, you can see from the body language of the they have already made their choice and they have finished their pain. Um, that is for that. And if you look at it in the other way around, campaigns are going on here and there. The, uh, the, the candidates are visiting different worlds and all that. We, we have seen a lot of... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, continue, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have seen a lot of um, campaign promises in the past. And we have also seen people, um, not the candidates or rather the people who are in power, not fulfilling that promise they made to the, the good people of Edo State. This time it has become a different ball game because we have a capable uh, hand, uh, capable hand in the bylaw, and Edo people are looking towards that direction to uh, scrutinize all the candidates before making their choices. And you also may mention of um, seeing somebody from this party today, tomorrow in another party, another party next tomorrow. That is to tell you that um, they are looking for their person, they are there for their personal interest, which is part of, uh, part of their way of playing their politics. And my other brother in the studio also said, 
Governor Baseki have done a lot of things, and there are some places where he did not uh, um, actually uh, meet all the expectations. But the area where he has performed well, we should be able to give him credit for that. He has laid uh, uh, a long-term development plan for the group of Edo State, and we need somebody who has the pedigree, who has the character, who has the charisma, who has the compassion for the people to take off on where Obaseki stop. You know, when the government stop, another government continue from there. And you can, you hear one of the candidates saying, I will continue from where Obaseki stop. Yeah, a, a, governor, a government will always start from where the other one stop. Because if we now have another different person who we don't know, who we don't know what he has done before, who we don't even have his record of what position he has had before, and now decided to come into power just uh, uh, staff on somewhere. All this development plan that the government had laid over the last eight years would definitely be Nabado. And that is what Edo people doesn't want to happen. And that is the reason why Edo people are yearning to say, this time we are going for the best, and the best is going to lead Edo state into the prosperity. So when you look at this campaign entirely, this campaign entirely, you will be able to differentiate those who are campaigning for their interest and also differentiate those who are putting the interest of the Edo people first. That is what is important. And I am urging the good people of Edo State to take party away from it and to take this language if you speak the language. Let me say, I am from Edo State, I'm from Edo Central. I give birth to my children here in the Europe. I'm trying to speak my little language to them so that they can understand going back and forth and all those things, which is understandable. So you will not expect them to come to Nigeria tomorrow and speak Benin, just like the way somebody who is born in Benin to be speaking in Benin. That doesn't mean that they are not at those that they are not from those states. And another thing is that anybody that we we are going to employ for this particular position in Dosa Debe Avenue. It's not going to govern a particular region or like the ASAN instruction. No, it's going to govern the entire people of Edo State. So he does not need ASAN language to govern the Edo people. And he does not need ASAN language to communicate with the international investors to bring investment to the Edo State. He does not need ASAN language or Benin language or the Afema language to have. Uh, this a proper communication that will bring what is important is that what do you have in your brain? What are your policies that you want to put in place? What are your manifesto talking about? Listen, if I'm applying to become uh, a political analyst in your studio and I am bringing my uh, CV forward, the first thing you will look is that what have I done before? Where is it coming from? Is he a fresh graduate? Even while he was a student, what has he achieved? What project has he embarked on? You know, all those things have a role to play. So you wouldn't just say, okay, because you know me as Benjamin and this, that, and they, oh, he's used to be my friend, or you just give me the position. And those state people are not like that. And that's the reason why we are going for the best this time. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, this election is between a competent man, a compassionate man, a man that has the character, a man that has the pedigree, a man that has shown in the last eight years or so who have been able to establish himself in the private sector and also in the uh, in uh, also in government. Benjamin, thank you. That we are thank pushing you. forward. Thank you, thank, thank you, Benjamin. Thank you so so much. Well, um, some of you can be very very tricky. Seriously, you guys are tricky, but all the same, let's. <laughs> Let's go on to the studio. We have just barely five minutes to call it a wrap on this show. Today's edition of This Morning on ITV. Some are saying that the number of crowd, well, let's say the crowd you see, so to speak, yeah, the crowd you see in a campaign rally would determine the number of persons, so to speak, that will vote for a political party. They're beginning to like make their judgment based on the uh, on the number of people present at uh, each campaign rally. How true is this? Uh, how will I put it down? Theory. Now, I'll tell you this, Wilson. Oh, yeah. If you go back to when Awolowo's daughter was going to contest the election in Lagos, mm. 
And at that time, remember, she, she came to the, the square and the whole place was jammed. And it was as if, oh, she has won. And the crowd was so much that you can't even, you can't even believe. And by the time the elections came, the primaries came, she lost her deposit. That's one. Two is that there is a specific historical reference. That in every crowd, there are three kind of people, three sort of people, three. Some came there to see how they can see your wrong parts on some other side. They want to see the errors in your person. They want to analyze the errors in your person. That's why they came. Not for your sake. They watch and they listen and they look at the errors. The other group are those who came to stand on the fence. Is he or is he not? They start watching, start waiting. Is he, is he not? <laughs> you mean this man? That's one group. And the other last group are the group who actually came for you. Now, what that suggests is that if what you are saying in the crowd is making some sense, those who are in the fence who say, let's just come and watch and see who is he by the way, let us know whether he's real or not, some will join you and some will leave. But to suggest that the crowd determines your victory, many a time is an illusion. And so what is important is that let us not talk about the crowd you find in the field. Because some of the crowd are hired crowd. Some of them are transported from villages, from other communities, from other states. I remember that there was a time some people went to somewhere in uh, Anambra, went to Akwaibom, mm. and the, the vessel was just coming in number, in droves, into Benin, into the stadium, and the place was jammed. By the close of the campaign, they all went back to their buses and started going back home. <laughs> So, and these guys yeah. have no, nothing, nothing, I use the word nothing, no value for the election. All they did was to come and do Iraq matters. All right. And what we call, if you like, call it a facade. All right. And everybody says, oh, we saw a crowd. So, unfortunately, mm. those people are also paid. And the cost of that movement is a cost on the, on the man contesting. Mm. What I am always saying is that before you go and contest as a person, do an introspection. Help yourself by doing proper analysis of yourself. Do I have what it takes? All right. All do, right. I, do I have what it takes to run an election? Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much, uh, Comrade Kadri. That's your last line on this segment. Well, Comrade Christopher, okay. you have just 45 seconds because I'm getting single to collect your rap on this show. Okay. What advice do you have for the electorate trying to base that judgment on what they see? This camping ground. I, I think Kadri has said everything. Even yeah. in this election, we drive around town that is mm. interstate, mm. and uh, there are times when a huge convoy of buses convey people from one <laughs> election ground to another will pass you. Yeah. Uh, so the, the crowd, crowd is deceptive, yeah. and nobody should uh, hope on crowds. All right, thank Let you. Let us look at the candidates and their pedigrees. Thank you, thank you so so much, uh, uh, Commander Jekere. Well, uh, Barrister Godwin, <laughs> briefly, yes. our time is up. Yes. That is, they have said it all. Mm -hmm. The qu big question you ask yourself, all those people you see in the crowd, how many of them have cars to vote? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> sorry, sorry. How many of them have cars to vote us cars? In Lagos. Yes. Somebody ran into PDP election, mm. uh, campaign ground. Yes. And he forgot to remove the cap. <laughs> and he ran into APC PC. campaign ground. <laughs> and and so I said, ah, you clear mobile. Look at your head. He said, oh, I can't do it. They never have put that card. All right, thank you. Benjamin, <laughs> you have just 30 seconds to give us the last line on the discussion. Benjamin, over to you. 30 seconds, please. Your conclusion. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a little bit funny. Yeah, you're very, very correct. The crowd is not all with it. Am I the... Uh, the, the victory of a candidate at the end of the day. I'm just urging the good people of Edo State to open their eyes and be very, very focused in voting for somebody that will move Edo State forward and voting for the best and voting for somebody that have a good pedigree and voting for somebody that have them at heart and their interest in the position of power. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you, Benjamin, all the way from Germany. Gentlemen, I appreciate all of you. Thank you thank so, you so much for coming on today's show. Well, thank you've heard them, but check out this fact. I've seen PDP adverts, I've seen APC adverts, ADC adverts, YPP 
adverts, uh, NNPP adverts on uh, our, our station. Uh, LP, yes, LP also adverts in, in our station. I mean, we have some political parties. The rest of you, what are you doing? We are barely a month ago. What are you doing? Are you in this race? You're advertising your Think state. about it. Think about it. Of course, you come to us. Everybody, just come. We have space for you, okay? <laughs> Let people know what you have in store for a new citizen. And of course, this platform is the best platform to bring out your jingle and your messages for a dual citizens. Gentlemen, thank you once more. Thank I appreciate you. a wonderful analysis. We'll do it again some other time. Bye for now.